What's going on YouTube? Alex here. I'm bringing you the fourth video of our 7 part comparison series and today we are taking a look at the performance of these three smartphones. To begin the test we start by turning them off and then turning them back on all at the same time. Feel free to watch which phone is the fastest there. Now the thing that's really important to me in this test is that we actually judge these phones by their everyday performance not by how cool their processor and name sounds or how much they dominate in a benchmark test. Surprisingly it took the iPhone 5s a long time to turn off but when we turned the phones back on it was the fastest. I don't really think it matters that much how fast you can turn a phone on and off unless it takes a ridiculous amount of time but I thought that this test was a smooth way to begin this video. For the first real test we are running Geekbench 3. Unfortunately this benchmark app is not available for Windows phones so the Nokia Lumia 1020 has to sit this one out. Let's talk specs for a sec. The iPhone 5S uses the new A7 processor which is the world's very first 64 bit chip for a smartphone. It's clocked at 1.3 GHz and it's a dual core CPU. Also the iPhone 5S has 1 GB of RAM. Now the Galaxy S4 uses the Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 which is a quad core CPU clocked at 1.9 GHz and it has 2 GB of RAM. Let's check out our results. Clearly the iPhone 5S wins here. It has 1414 points versus 679 in the single core score and the multi core score is 2562 versus 1868. It is time for the Lumia 1020 to join the action. We are running GFX Bench which is a graphics benchmark test. Now let me direct your attention to the Lumia 1020 right away because the part of the clip you see right there it doesn't really run fluently there are many lags in it but the same part of the clip you will see later will run perfectly fine really smooth on both the S4 and the iPhone 5S. Ok let's talk specs again. Lumia 1020 has a dual core processor clocked at 1.5 GHz and 2 GB of RAM. So it has also 2 GB of RAM like the S4 and double the amount of the iPhone 5S. Here we have the results. I'm not a perfect expert when it comes to interpreting every single line but the takeaway should be that the iPhone 5S showed a really strong performance and also the Galaxy S4 did well and the Lumia 1020 ran into some trouble. Back to reality, let's play some Temple Run. But first watch how fast the iPhone 5S opens this app. So this is where all the hardware power really comes into play. Then the Galaxy S4 was second followed by the Lumia 1020. But actually I'm not doing this part of the test to show you how insanely fast the iPhone 5S is. I want to show you that even with the Lumia 1020 you can play games perfectly fine, there are no lags and your gaming experience won't be any worse on Lumia 1020 than on the other two devices except for the one additional second it takes for the app to load. We have seen that the iPhone 5S is an amazingly fast smartphone. The Galaxy S4 also extremely fast but sometimes when you are in the menu and you swipe from left to right there can be some micro lags and that's from Samsung's TouchWiz. Now I'm not too concerned about it because they don't happen a lot and when they happen they're just a millisecond long but I thought that this information definitely belongs into this video. Now the Nokia Lumia 1020 is also fast enough. Every task I ever threw at it it handled perfectly fine so even though it's not as fast as the other two devices I would be surprised if you ever had any performance issues with it. In case you wonder why we haven't done any speed tests in the browser that's because even when I connect all three smartphones to the same Wi-Fi I still can't measure the performance accurately. For the rest of the video let's talk about this whole iPhone 5s 64 bit thing. Now let me start here. 10 years ago all our computers ran on 32 bit systems. Now the thing you need to know about 32 bit systems is that they are only compatible with up to 4 GB of RAM. But then there was a point in time where we needed more than 4 GB of RAM in our computers. So obviously we updated to 64 bit chips. Now let's take a look at smartphones these days. Do we need more than 4 GB of RAM in our smartphones? Absolutely not. The iPhone 5s uses 1 GB of RAM, the Galaxy Note 3 uses 3 GB of RAM and manufacturers don't give us more RAM than we need because it costs some money and it drains the battery of our smartphones. So why does Apple decide to go to a 64-bit chip system in 2013? Now the thing you, know, you need to know about the tech world is it's super important to be able to say hey we did this and that first. 
and Apple used to be the innovator of this industry in the last couple of years have been kind of tough for them. They haven't been coming up with great innovations like they used to. So that's a big deal for them to say, hey, we did this first. But for the consumer, it doesn't make sense for the consumer, for the consumer to have a 64-bit smartphone. Now, the great thing about this new chip is that it's downward compatible. That means all the 32-bit systems that you already have in the Android, uh, in the iOS ecosystem, still run on the new 64-bit chip. And all the Apple apps like Safari, they are already rewritten and optimized for the 64-bit system. So you do get a performance bump with these apps. But the thing is, I never said, man, my dialer app is so slow, I can't even make phone calls anymore. Or I've missed my appointment because my calendar didn't open, my calendar app was too slow. So the 64-bit thing is, it's more for hardcore applications that we don't have these days. But maybe five years down the road, every smartphone, no doubt about it, every smartphone will use a 64-bit system down the road because there will be some hardcore applications who need a lot of juice. But right now, there are no apps that really need that insane juice that a 64-bit system offers. So doesn't it's not really necessary at this point, but Apple will sell a ton of these smartphones because people say, wow, 64-bit in a smartphone, that's so new, it's so innovative, so fast, I need to buy this. Now, don't get me wrong, the iPhone 5S is insanely fast. It's Usain Bolt on steroids fast, but you don't really need it these days. But like I said, for Apple, smart, smart move because you will sell a ton of these. And when the day comes that you really need a 64-bit system, all the Apple apps will be rewritten and optimized. Also, third-party apps will be optimized for the new chip and there will be a fluent transition for the customer. And that's obviously a good thing for Apple as well because they won't have any issues upgrading when it's really necessary. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this content. Feel free to continue here. That's the first part of the series, then the next part, and this is my review for Sony's lens style camera. The links are also in the description box. I'll see you there. Peace.